you think men are important? Well, like for what? <laughs> we need to kill all men. Men can cry. You so it's okay to be weak. Scientists have now discovered a way for women to impregnate themselves using their own bone marrow. And the only child that can result from those pregnancies are female. So we no longer have any need for you, genetically or physically. We've met some of your fans, and they were all male fans, that, the ones that we talked to. And they were struggling with their manhood, and you give them this message that it's okay to be a man. It's not okay. It's necessary. What the hell are we going to do without men? You look around the city here, you see all these buildings go up. These men, they're doing impossible things. They're under the streets, working on the sewers. They're up on the power lines in the storms and the rain, breaking themselves in half on a regular basis, making sure that everything that always breaks works. They're keeping this impossible infrastructure functioning, this thing that works in a miraculous manner. They work themselves to death. Toxic masculinity. That appalling phrase. It's what keeps the world going round. There's been this attempt to identify masculine competence and power with tyranny. The problem is toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity. And that's very, very hard on young men, but it's very helpful for people to hear that they should make themselves competent and dangerous and take their proper place in the world. Competent and dangerous? Mm. Why dangerous? Because it's the alternative to being weak. And weak is not good. The people who shoot up the high schools, they're weak. How is it good to be dangerous? Because it makes you formidable. And life is a very difficult process. And you're not prepared for it unless you have the capacity to be dangerous. That doesn't mean that you should be cruel. It doesn't mean any of that. There's a statement in the New Testament, the meek shall inherit the earth. But the meek isn't well translated. It means something more like those who have swords and know how to use them but keep them sheathed will inherit the world. You have to be powerful and formidable and then peaceful in that order. And that's not the same as being naive and weak and harmless, which is what young men are being encouraged to be. Being a man means being strong, being stoic, being emotionless, and that's not real. That's a very bad idea. It's a very bad idea. Because naive, weak, and harmless means that you can't withstand the tragedies of life. You can't bear any responsibility. You'll end up bitter. And when you get bitter, then you get dangerous. Men are not meant to be dominant. Men are meant to be submissive. When you do that and there's like muscles there, Nobody cares about that. People are afraid of the truth because often if you reveal it, it causes conflict in the moment. You should be afraid of the truth, but you should be more afraid of falsehood. You don't make men safe by making them weak. They're much more dangerous when they're weak because they'll stab you in the back when they get the chance. You make men safe by making them strong and then by making sure that they're disciplined. It's the men that have the most aggressive and fearless temperaments that can be the best men. But it's like having a very powerful dog. You better discipline it because otherwise it's going to be a monster. There's a big difference between letting people do something for themselves and saying men should be dangerous. By dangerous, that implies I should be ready to threaten someone, to hurt somebody. No, you should be capable of it, but that doesn't mean you should use it. There's nothing to you otherwise. If you're not a formidable force, there's no morality in your self-control. If you're incapable of violence, not being violent isn't a virtue. People who teach martial arts know this full well. If you learn a martial art, you learn to be dangerous, but simultaneously you learn to control it. Both of those come together, and the combination of that capacity for danger and the capacity for control is what brings about the virtue. Otherwise, you confuse weakness with with moral virtue. I'm harmless, therefore I'm good. It's like, no, that isn't how it works. That isn't how it works at all. If you're harmless, you're just weak. And if you're weak, you're not going to be good. You can't be, because it takes strength to be good. It's very difficult to be good. If you're afraid of male power, crippling them is one solution. Now, it's not a good solution, and that's going to happen if you think of the patriarchy as a tyrant. When we look into the past and we see our evil uncles, it's just a complete bloody catastrophic mess, isn't it? Slavery and genocide and war and oppression. And that's on all of us, isn't it? And it's always lurking there in the background. And so is that male power? Yes, in some ways. I mean, if you don't give a man a sword, he can't use a sword. So not giving him a sword is one way of making sure he's peaceful, but it's not the optimal way. And besides, if you cripple men, they become far more dangerous. They become dangerous in an un terrible underground fashion. You want to encourage that power because it's actually a tremendous force for good if it's brought under control. But that's a hard thing to get right. And it also requires a lot of trust and work on the part of women. Right now, our society is criticizing itself. That's part of patriarchy theory, and the idea is the hierarchies that are characteristic of our society 
are male dominated and predicated on power and tyranny. Okay, so I don't buy that. I think that any hierarchical structure can degenerate into tyranny, but I think that most of the hierarchical structures in the West are about as good as hierarchical structures ever get. Okay, so let's say you do buy that though. The hierarchy is patriarchal and it's corrupt. Well then let's say you're a young man and you're ambitious. Well then obviously you're corrupt too because your ambition is to take your place in the corrupt hierarchy. And so because the hierarchies aren't tyrannical and because they're based on competence, your ambition, if you have any sense, is actually to become competent. But if you confuse that with a power drive, and there's tremendous confusion about that, then you confuse young men because they think if they're ambitious and they want to get ahead, let's say, they want to be useful and competent, that they're somehow buying into the tyranny. So you actually punish the young men for their virtues. And I actually think that that's part and parcel of this critical process. Because I think that one of the things that drives the people who are theorizing about the tyrannical patriarchy is that they absolutely detest competence. And it's a deep war. So it's very annoying. It's very hard on young men. A harmless man is not a good man. A good man is a very, very dangerous man who has that under voluntary control. So I gave a speech. Uh, one of my very good friends got married. And at this speech, I was talking about what it was to be a man when I felt like I was a man. And I said there was three things that I felt let me transition from being mentally insecure about who I was as a person to being, okay, I'm actually good with who I am. Number one was learning how to fight. I got into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and mixed martial arts and I learned how to fight. And now all of a sudden when I looked at other people, I wasn't posturing, I wasn't trying to pretend that I was tough. I knew that most people that I would encounter, I could defeat in a physical altercation. Number two is going into combat. Because even though you might be tough in a street fight, when you're facing death, well, that's a whole nother level. And for me going into combat, was I gonna be scared? Was I gonna be a coward? Was I gonna be scared? of death and when I went into combat I wasn't I was fine I was okay with the fact that I could die and the last one was I got married and had kids because all of a sudden all these being aggressive and working to fight and be able to destroy in an efficient way well then I took that and combined it with okay now I'm gonna take care of my wife and our children you don't want to control aggression any more than you want to control sex you want to integrate it you need to have the capacity for danger you need to be dangerous but you need to learn how to not use it except when it's necessary. And that is not the same as being harmless. Harmless, that's a terrible virtue. There's nothing virtuous about harmlessness. It just means you're ineffectual. It's very useful to tell everyone, not just men, that they have an important role to play, a necessary role, and that if they act properly and honestly and forthrightly, that they can put their lives together and they can help their families and they can make their communities better. I like men a lot. I mean, I have nothing against them. I think they're great. It's gonna get me in trouble with all the women, but I think that women, they make unreasonable demands on men and they don't make reasonable demands of themselves. I'm the guy, man. I'm watching pornography and getting off. It's like, what a man. Don't do anything physically with anyone that you wouldn't talk to them about.